Well, hello, hello, God bless you. This is part one of jumping over the hurdle of anxiety. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to learn about concepts from another perspective, Father. We thank you and praise you for the medical community, but we thank you, Lord God, also that there is another perspective. We embrace, Lord God, what you have shared with the doctors and shared with the scientists. But we thank you, that, Lord God, that even beyond them, that you, Lord God, have a concept and a perspective. And I thank you for what you share with me in reference to anxiety. And I ask you to give me the tongue of the learner that I may know how to speak a word in season to those who may be weary, those who may be going through another night of, of just being paralyzed from the terror, Lord God, the torment of anxiety. I thank you, Lord God, that there is an answer and there is hope. And there is hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and turn the music off. Um, time with the Holy Spirit. Three hour piano instrumental music by Zappy T. Keys. So um, we're talking about, um, I promised um, the members on Unshackle from Depression that I would um, create videos for this particular series. So I am doing that. Um, I want to talk with you a little bit about um, anxiety, and I'm going to share from a post that I wrote, because um, I think that if you have an understanding uh, about depression, then you can easily understand about anxiety, okay? If you have an understanding, you understand that spiritually speaking, um, depression actually is the spirit um, of heaviness described in Isaiah 61 and 3. And that um, anxiety also comes from an unclean spirit. The unclean spirit that anxiety comes from is called the spirit of fear. We're going to talk about how the two of them um, are similar and yet they're different. So the name of this is Depression and Anxiety, the Terrible Twosome. It says here many times when we see the presence of depression, we also see the presence of anxiety and vice versa. I also had this dual diagnosis. Um, depression and anxiety both are invasions of the enemy operating in the human soul. We know our soul is comprised of our will, that the part of us that makes a decision, our emotions, which is our feelings, and our mind, which is where we have thoughts, we have perceptions. Now, we realize that that's not our brain. Our brain is physical, but our mind and our entire soul is invisible. So we're talking about an invisible place. Amen? It says here, both depression and anxiety have a root cause and entry. So just like depression... Um, there was something that initiated um, the anxiety. Some individuals, even in trauma, um, childhood issues, unresolved issues, there was a feeling, there was an entryway that was created um, for this spirit of fear. It's from the root, again, the spirit of fear. Um, it's a derivative of it, and it's different. From the spirit of fear, but it is from the spirit of fear. You know what I'm saying? So it says here, somewhere in the thoughts of those who are attacked, the enemy's suggestions latched onto a belief of the individual. So somewhere down the line, we have latched hold to, I have to be in control of my future, um, or um, dying is going to be very scary. I'm going to die from um, some type of disease or I'm going to, um, I'm concerned about if I don't do this or that or the other or how about if this happens and how about if that happens. Somewhere along the line, our um, ability to shift our cares and our concerns onto God and to really trust him and to rest in a place of trusting him, it just has not matured as of yet. Amen. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. It talks about how the portal of entry or the entry can occur during the times of vulnerability, including childhood trauma, common diseases, um, tragedies, and other emotional distraught incidences 
which produce, um, you can have unforgiveness can be an, an entryway for anxiety, offense, um, all types of things. Um, it says here in depression, the enemy suggests and plants gloomy and other negative thoughts in our mind. And he stimulates emotions that include gloom, mental obscurity, self-pity, feeble, feebleness, and a spirit of suicide. So, but in anxiety, there's still the planting of negative thoughts, but they're foreboding, um, you know, scared, scary thoughts um, that have to do with dangerous outcomes or have to do with possible fatalities, um, doubt, paranoia, and stimulates negative emotions, including body sensations. So, because we're talking about a spirit, um, a spirit is a disembodied being. It's a, like a person, but they just don't have a body. So a spirit has the capacity to move throughout your body. And some people who are dealing with anxiety, they have what we call psychosomatic um, illnesses, which is they could actually feel like something is wrong. I definitely went through that. They feel like something is wrong. Sometimes things are wrong. Um, sometimes things are wrong because the stress of anxiety actually created the issue. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You think something's wrong and you were worrying about that something's wrong, right? And then something becomes wrong because of the worry. And the worry um, produced um, an ailment. And then other times there are issues, but a lot of times um, with anxiety, there's more of a paranoia that's associated with it, you know? So it's not like, um, I think, well, something's going on with me and I'm just going to go get it taken care of. I think this, but in anxiety, I think this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. You know, it's like, it's, it's a, it's like a, um, a, a, um, I always think of it like maybe like a, cloth that has like honey on it and I just walk in I walk um, among a lot of insects and all kind of insects are just getting stuck on there you know what I'm saying and sometimes you can have um, um, compulsive um, obsessive thinking or thoughts that feel like the thought is frozen in your mind you know what I mean and we really call these noise and pestilence spiritually, where you continue to have the repetition of a thought, you know, that's nagging at you. So um, these things can be true when it comes to anxiety. But once again, spiritually speaking, it is coming from an unclean spirit called the spirit of fear. Of course, we know that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. So we know then that if we, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, it's not his will. It's not his will for us to have a derivative of fear. It's not his will for us to be paranoid about what might happen. God has called us to be in a place of rest, kind of like a child. You know, like your children, um, they just had a confidence in you. They knew you loved them. And they knew that you were going to take care of them. So they didn't worry about tomorrow. They were in the present. They dealt with whatever was going on with them at that moment. And they just trusted that mommy and daddy were going to make a way. So they didn't worry about what they were going to eat. They wouldn't worry about they didn't worry about where they were going to sleep, where they were going to get their new, you know, next pair of shoes, um, none of those things. And so that's really the type of relationship that God wants us to have. And the enemy tries to um, abort that through um, anxiety. It says here, doing my experience in emerging um, from depression and anxiety, my attention differed. So in the elimination of depression, I concentrated on walking in kingdom authority and opposing the enemy. You know, just like with Jesus, he said the enemy said something to him in the wilderness. He said something back to him, you know, and so it was it was like a very um, strict regimented type of thing, you know. And then, of course, I also embrace um, praise and worship because I know that that brings in the presence of God. So, but um, in anxiety, I focused on addressing the enemy, but my primary focus was to draw closer to God because the scripture says that perfect love casts out all fear. God is love. 
So a mature relationship with God casts out fear just like that mom. If I can rest, I'm resting in my mom, you know, that she loves me and she's going to care for me. I don't know what the future holds, but I know she has me. And so that's eventually where you're going to be going. And the part of the healing that you're going to walk in is just being able to rest. No, I'm not in control. But you never were in control. Even before you uh, were struggling with um, anxiety, you, you weren't in control. I mean, you know, make your heart beat. Not in control. You know, make your blood flow. You're not in control. You know, make yourself think about, um, do you know exactly what words you're going to say two weeks from now? You don't know. You're not in control. But there is one who does know that. The scripture says that God knows our thoughts are far off. He know, he's already been to the end. And so what we have to learn ultimately to do is to trust in him. Amen. We have to learn to trust in him. And so whatever it is that's blocking us from trusting in God has to be addressed when we start talking about anxiety. Whatever it is that's blocking us from trusting God has to be addressed. All right. So it goes on here to say, the goal is to learn strategies um, and how to walk on the authority that Jesus Christ has given us and learn how to stand against the additional attacks as you're connecting to the healing to go through um, also your emotional healing. Amen. So once again, it's similar to um, depression, but you have to be real. There's more of a focus, I believe, on your relationship your loving relationship with God, realizing that God is in control. Because what the enemy tells you when you are um, um, dealing with anxiety, and we're going to get ready to close out for this session, um, is that you need to be in control. You know, and because you're not in control, how about this happens? How about if this happens? How about if this happens? You know, and even when you come out, still you're not going to be in control. That's something that we just as human beings do not have. And so we have to begin to speak speak facts you know to him i don't have to be in control because god is and god lives on the inside of me and god has my life you know and so but it just that surge um that that comes at that moment your mind is definitely necess not necessarily on god which is something that you're going to have to learn how to do even on top of the surge to be able to connect with god to say no Spirit of fear, I'm not receiving this from you. And what do we mean I'm not receiving? It doesn't mean I'm not going to have a surge. No, it means I'm not going to embrace this surge. I'm not embracing this. Why, do I, why is it like that? Because we know that the enemy has access to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. From the littlest kid all the way to a person who's 100 years old, he has access to, if you're saved or not, he has access to our mind and to our emotions. Amen. So I have to understand that. I have to get that. There's nothing I can do about that. But there is something I can do when he is offering me these things, these, these surging. I'm able to say no. No. I'm not spending the rest of my day having to feel you. No. You're a liar. You're, an, you're invading. You got to go. And then I'm turning to God. I'm thanking him. I am inviting the spirit of truth in by praise and worship. We know that praise and worship is a weapon. And you can use that when we start talking about dealing with anxiety. So we're going to be talking about, um, really, really we're already doing it, talking about how to jump over that hurdle. It's going to be a matter of doing it while you're scared first. So it's not like the anxiety is going to subside and you have all this time to, um, you know, get all, gather all this information. You're going to be doing some things while you're scared, while your mind is telling you, I don't have time to look at that video. I don't have time to go and write down, um, you know, scriptures and that type of thing. Um, that along with your soaking worship, amen, you, we're going to, you just have to do it. Amen. So we're going to talk um, a little bit more. I've decided that I'm just going to make this a two-parter. Um, I had 
I had several different um, topics I wanted to talk about um, in reference to anxiety, but I think that this is more just of a, a just summarizing. Um, in our library of videos, we have lots of videos already um, that have to do with anxiety. So uh, you can, if you're not, uh, if you're not a uh, subscriber, I want to encourage you to subscribe. And um, I'm in the process of doing some things that so it'll be easier for you to access what you need and depending upon the topic. Amen. So I'm in the process of doing that. But I want to let you know and encourage you that God through Jesus Christ has already freed you from anxiety. And I want you to keep that as the focus no matter what. Keep that as the focus. I'm already free. Yes, I do feel the I do feel the symptoms. But I'm still already free. It's kind of like if I had an infection and it hurt because I had the infection, whatever it was, had an infection and I started taking penicillin. When I started taking penicillin, I know I'm getting better. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, I'm finished. And sometimes things are well, but they still, the swelling still has to go down. Amen. So you have to begin to prepare yourself for battle. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna have one more teaching on jumping over the hurdle of anxiety, and then I do believe that we have um, quite a few other um, lessons that you'll be able to get some wisdom from. Most importantly, we'll talk about what we need to do next. <laughs> okay. God bless you. Loving kisses to you. I want you to be encouraged and listen. I want you to know something. There is hope. You know. It's so amazing when it comes to teaching about anxiety. Um, it takes me a minute to reach back into what I went through. You know, which I think is amazing. And it just it's just so reminiscent of that scripture in Job that says that you will forget the misery. It will be like water passing by. So I have the memory and I still, you know, I do know how to contend with um, anxiety so that it will not stay or remain and I just still I practice what I learned years ago even today and so I'm going to teach you what I learned and I'm going to trust God that he will give you an ear to hear and that you will ask the spirit of God what you are to do with what with the information that you're given from me I'm here to tell you you don't have to live a life full of anxiety attacks. You really don't. Once the devil knows that you know who you are in God and that you know that you're already free, you'll start seeing a decline in the attacks. And then you have and because his time is short on this earth, you know, he's going he would rather go to somebody who does not know who they are who's not growing in their relationship with God so that they can walk in a place called rest. That's what God has for you. God bless you, love, and kisses until we meet again.